Hey everybody, Model Man here, and on the bench for April 1st, 2014, this is no joke whatsoever. Jupiter is moving along solid. What, what, wait, where's the Jupiter? Well, it's actually sitting over here, and sitting over here, and sitting over behind there. And what I have here are a couple items that are helping me prepare for the next steps of the Jupiter. I want to do a lot of Alclad painting on the J2, and I've never done that before, so I have to practice. And I also have to know exactly what colors I'm dealing with, too. So, so if you know anything about Alclad, you may have seen that they have an airliner fuselage painted in their different metals. Well, being a sci-fi guy, I was almost going to grab a fuselage of some kind, but then I figured, wait a minute, wouldn't this be nice? And this stuff is freaking gorgeous in person, and you wouldn't believe it. And I can't even believe how reflective and brilliant that it is here on video. This is just really amazing stuff. So having only just finished this Alclad chip chart here, I've still got the fan on high because there's a lot of paint fumes in this place right now. I just stocked up on some gloss black paint to help me out with the owl clouds and the first owl clad test is going to be Vader here. He's got some gloss for the leather but I'm going to have to tone that back a little later. What I have to do now is mask off his uh, leather, just leave all the metal and then I'm going to go with a combination of two different colors here. And Vader is relevant to the J2 because he's a test bed, not only for the owl clouds, but also for using uh, contact pads in his feet for the power. That was my idea for the J2 initially, and I figured I may as well try and throw this figure together and see how that works. Having painted this owl clad chart, I really want to do some more in a slightly more heavy-duty kind of manner than just a couple spots on him. So... I got a pair of 3PO's, I'm just going to slap them together, put three fiber optics in each eye leading to a single LED in the body. If it gets any basic seam work, I'll be surprised. Uh, I just want to get some paint on them and see how they look. So I'm going to break those out in the immediate future. In addition to some black spray paint, I also stocked up on some dark ghost gray for the stairs and a little sand. I've been calling this 1735 in a lot of the videos recently for the Jupiter. It's really 1706 that I wanted. And here's a little innovation. I had to sacrifice one bottle so I chose aluminum as it's the most common. But the idea is you drill a hole in the cap, Glue it into your larger uh, spray bottle. If Maybe if you use a cup, then this won't matter to you. I sealed this off with Ava's epoxy. Now, just cleaning the straw, I can go into any single bottle here and have the color I need immediately without having to pour it into anything else. It's a really convenient time saver. I've done it for my model master and for testers paint lids, and uh, you can't go wrong. I definitely recommend it. The Jupiter, as you've been seeing, is making significant progress. I'm about to get back into sequencers. Right now, as you're seeing, I'm working on the lower hull for that guy. And I'm going to be making a whole bunch of custom little stuff immediately. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on, and it's really great to be active like this. And, oh, the charity auction. Let me mention that real quick. Hey everybody, Model Man here, and it's March 31st, and I'm just getting through uh, the initial stages of the charity auction. Yesterday, Saturday, I received four more models from round two. I set them for a one-day auction, and they've already gone off uh, just about an hour ago, I think, and then there was a pause for a little while. Power supplies, the books are now for sale, uh, we're coming up on the posters, and then we're into plastic for a little while. Then there will be about an hour's lull, and the rest of the auction will go off. So there's been some really nice bidding. I think uh, the most expensive thing is 26 bucks. There's a couple of those. 
And so sitting at the halfway mark, there's another hour until the uh, next round of models goes off, and I think there's like 15 of those at least. Actually, there's, yeah, 15 items, 14 have bids, 36 bidders for 165 bucks so far. Everything that has sold so far, 15 items, 15 items sold, 228 bucks. 53 bucks in, 175 still outstanding. So far, $394 in total. If the bids on the last 15 items go up a little, we're going to break 400 bucks. Nice. Hey, and just an hour or so later, $436.01 to five different charities. I'll have the totals over the next few days, and I'll do a special video for that, as always. And, uh, yeah. So as soon as everyone's paid up, I can pay off all the donations. And uh, All right, so that was 39 items, $436. Really nice. Thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, the power supplies didn't sell. I think there were five boxes of those. The box of wire didn't sell. Uh, Shatner's Star Trek Memories didn't get any love. The GTO Pontiac 64 didn't sell either. And one of the Star Trek blue tin posters didn't sell. But everything else, as you can see, I've already got a lot of stuff boxed up. i got to go and buy some custom boxes for a few of the other people t tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, I've already got a bunch of stuff shipped I've got other stuff waiting to be shipped and this stuff is just waiting to be paid for and so with that thanks to everybody for bidding that was a really good auction I was looking at the uh, previous uh, ones over the last five years it turns out this was number six so the next one will be the seventh and this one alone at 436 bucks is more than two auctions in 2012 and I think it's the single largest amount of money taken in yet, which is uh, a really great thing, I think. So I'll have some more totals and individual things on that in the coming days once all that process is through the paperwork and so on. And uh, yeah, this is already all that's left to ship is uh, six or seven boxes, really. I got a lot of it out this morning. I've got a couple more about to go out now, and uh, which means all these guys should go out tomorrow. So thanks again and watch for some more good model stuff coming up soon with Vader, 3PO, and the Jupiter 2. Star Trek fans, I have the most amazing breaking news that is going to completely rewrite the history of the 11-foot studio model of the 1701 Enterprise. You've probably heard stories about people going through their attic in Hollywood and coming across this irreplaceable movie item that was thought lost to history, or going through an unrelated warehouse, or a basement, or in an alley, or even walking down the street happened to me just a few weeks ago. I can't tell you where yet because I still have to get archivists in there to document the site and all that kind of thing. But I was walking along a creek in Southern California and there in the distance I was like what the heck is that? So I thought I'd go and take a closer look. And as I got closer I realized no it couldn't possibly be could it? But yeah, it was the original studio model of the Enterprise, probably left sitting out here for the last 45 years in this weather. But how good a condition could it be in? It didn't look too bad. You saw what happened to the Galileo, though. So I had to get closer and take a look and make sure that it was the real one. And yes, there on the top of the saucer, all the original Lego pieces. The Graf Zeppelin-like ribbing on the secondary hull and the total clincher the suction cups on the fronts of the Bussards that you never see on any model replica but were always clearly there. Why didn't you guys put that on there round two, huh? Jeez. So, I'm hoping to mount an expedition back there later in the spring, if not the summer. Get proper measurements, document everything, and make sure everything's... <laughs> and make sure the site is secure. <laughs> and let the Smithsonian know they've probably got a fake. <laughs> uh, so, more details on that later. Thanks for watching, everybody. See ya. <laughs>
As always, the Scale Model Addict. Scott Gervan brings you his own work and the Scale Model Addict Forum and Scale Model Addict Magazine. Dr. Faust's The Painting Clinic. Check out Tony for miniatures and model painting. What time is it? It's Cranky Time. With his lab rat, Ori, assistant, Igor, Dr. Cranky brings you the best in rats, rods, and rust. Steve Neal's Garage with Rosie the Wonder Dog, Mary, and Xena. Featuring feature film props, restorations, and scale model artistry. Scott Alexander of Atomic City Models, specializing in 2001 A Space Odyssey model recreations and a few other notable genre pieces as well. Braddock 001, whether a one-to-one scale Borg sleep station, droids of any make or model, or even popular superhero armor or any kind of sculpture, look to Brad Carpenter to bring it. And for the trials, tribulations, and tales of my car Red 2 and its droid lemons, check in on Gears McTinkerson. Bad Grendel's for fine model work, timer chips, and electronics knowledge. The Model Man Tom channel would like to thank the following for their sponsorship. Elliot Brown of Kingston Vacuum Works, featuring Fedoratron.com and WarmPlastic.com. Lighting for extraordinary modelers and vacuum forming tables for designers, modelers, and engineers. The Kingston Vacuum Works covers it all. Paul at thefiberopticstore.com, now presenting the beta version of its new site, thefiberopticprojects.com, for an exceptional selection and great prices of fiber optics of all sizes and quantities, thefiberopticstore.com. Carpenter Creations, if you can dream it, you can make it. Brad and Carpenter, science fiction artiste. From full scale board cubicles or droid displays of all kinds, Carpenter Creations. Steve Neal's Garage, props and models for motion picture and discerning collectors, as well as prosthetic makeup and CG. Contact Steve through stevenealsgarage.com. Model reviews from Round 2 Models, AMT, MPC, Polar Lights and Lindbergh. Scale Model Attic Magazine. Issue 3 now available. Issue number 4 is in the works. The Orbital Defense Engineering Commission, a 2001 A Space Odyssey specific forum for scale model kits, reviews, news, and discussion. Odec.proboards.com. More than just talk, hobbytalk.com. A forum for every hobby. And for the finest reference collection of feature film studio props and miniatures and models, Modelers Miniatures and Magic at ModelerMagic.com.